Hey there, welcome back to Moms on the Rocks. I am Jody from Reality B Podcast. And I'm Carrie from Sip and Shine. I almost missed my mark, sorry. <laughs> That's right, and we are two friends trying to be not just moms while careering, carpooling, and cocktailing. I gotta ask you right off the bat, are you cocktailing tonight? Are you just doing H2O? Hells yeah, I got Dark Horse Rosé over here. Mike's been buying all the sweet wines because he's a secret wine drinker of what of sweet wines to the point where he makes me order them and then he switches our glasses. But so you're having sweet white wine. I am yeah. having my classic vodka tonic with my Schweppes, not Schweppes, <laughs> diet tonic. And um, yeah, it's the perfect thing for tonight. It's a beautiful sunny day in Chicago, went to the pool, got a little bronze action going on. And uh, yeah, life is good tonight. Are you feeling better tonight than last time? Yeah, I am. I've had some major like spiritual enema going on, I think. Mm, a spiritual enema. Isn't that like up the butt? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm hoping that it drew out all of my negative energy. So I'm going to just break the ice right up front. And I think there are other people out here that I really want to give a lot of credit to that are divorced and then or cheated on and then have to deal with their children then going around the new person. Because I don't think that I ever – thought about it or ever gave enough credence or what they go through. I I seriously don't. Like I don't I don't know how they do it. Like how do you have your child go somewhere else for holidays or have another I think I've been the primary female in my ex-husband's life for the last 6 years. Like he's dated and I've seen him on match at the same time as me, but I never had to deal with going to the house and seeing some other bitch's shit at the house, him deviating from plans we made centered around our children for another woman. Like, what is it going to be like when she he brings her around his family, who I just spent the weekend with his mom in New York? Like, how, how do women do it? I don't know. Because I, I think it's a whole different kind of – grieving, but you're never really, it's never really done. And that's the thing. Like it is just an open wound. I would assume, obviously I haven't been divorced. No. Hopefully I don't, but I don't think you can ever really just put that, the father of my kids or the mother of my kids to the side. I mean, you shared the most profound moments in your life with one another. And then just to be like, okay. Sorry, give birth. <laughs> like yeah. I was there when his dad died and that person that he's with, that he's dating, which AKA he never courted and dated me. She gets a better version of him. He's read the five languages of love. He right. has listened to podcasts. He's, he has totally self-actualized. And now I'm grouped in with being his 70-something-year-old mo mother, and he's very comfortable with me in that role. But I went over the other day because I was really, really upset about how he broke plans, and then he was also giving me kind of like a hard time about money stuff, which we'd never had an issue with about sharing expenses. And he was out every single night that he had our son because our girls were in New York, and I was fucking pissed. Like we had several conversations. Like I put my money into decorating his his house for my daughters, their rooms. And then mm. we were supposed to set it up while the girls were away. It was my only day. And he had already fucking made plans at nine o'clock in the morning. Like that was a sleepover. And I was just like, I'm spending money and time trying to help you out. And He's like, so I, so I cursed him out. We had the whole big fight though, whatever. And then I go over there and I'm like, well, this is, you know, how it is when you're known somebody for 20 years, you know, I curse you out. And then I'm like, okay, let's just do Bailey's room, you know, and he broke his plans, whatever, you know, to do this. But he's like, well, that's just because we have a higher level of parenting. And I'm like, I don't think he diminishes what I bring to the table because. Because he just assumes You've always done that, so he's just assuming that you're going to do it. I totally think that 
he diminishes my actual role. He just groups it in. Like he's been driving my car for two days because his car broke down. He just put like, it's a newer car, but it has a lot of miles on it. Put $1,900 into it last week for a battery, whatever other stuff going on. And somehow the battery died. And who does he call? He calls me. So me and the colonel go over there. We grab the car. He takes my car. He's had it for two days. Don't get a thank you. And it's just like, a lot of stuff that I do because I do see him as a co-parent, but also family. Like there's not that sexualness. There's not that lover like, but, and then he's just like the other day, all I needed to hear was Carrie, things are not going to change. You are still, I put his needs with the girl's needs and the Karen's needs above that of any partner I've ever been with. And I needed him to say, Carrie, you, where nothing is going to change. And he couldn't say that. Instead, he was like, oh, well, you know that he's like, you know that we have just a higher level of parenting. Like he couldn't because he's autistic light. He could not say to me, Carrie, <laughs> nothing is going to change. I'm going to keep treating you the way you've treated me. And you've established those boundaries until the kids grow. I've always put him and the girls first until we get through navigating parenting a special child, a special needs child and younger children. Right. And then what you're saying right now, you almost need to remember the frustration right now when you start thinking like, wow, this other person is getting the better version of him. Oh, you know what I know. I know. Well, this is my thing. I sat down and was like, I need to write down what are the positive traits of the Colonel and why did I divorce Patrick? Because yes, did we become closer because of Kieran and special needs? Yes, we did. To the point where it wasn't like a sexual relationship, but we really resolved a lot of our marital issues through that process. A lot of the pettiness. Yeah, we had to, to survive. And I really have to give a lot of credit because the person who dealt with the tears and the aggravation and me dealing with the fact that a pattern was changing because I already have all these other things in my life changing with the retirement and all that. And I'm like, nothing else can change right now. Why, why is he doing this now? Why is he changing now? Is Michael like what, what guy listens to his girl talk about the, what she's dealing with, with her ex-husband and do it with such grace and understanding. He's like, in a way, Carrie, you're kind of, mourning your marriage right now and I said yeah but I did that years ago he's like no not in this way and this is a new phase and he's done it with such grace and such understanding I have to give him a lot of credit well I think too when you're saying you know that you already grieved it or mourned it a divorce is different than a death and I'm gonna sound like a total asshole because I have not gone through divorce so I should be the last person talking about it but just looking from the outside I'm just you know, I love psychology and all that kind of stuff. It's different than a death because a death is final. That is it. But a a divorce is a relationship just like any other relationship where it's going to evolve and change and different factors come in, different life events come in. So you can never really close it and leave it at one homeostasis. Look at me trying to sound smart, but you know what I mean? Like it's always going to be changing. Well, and you know what it is too, is that I wish I could just never have connection with, talk to him again or whatever. Like I've usually what I do with other exes, like I'll usually just be like, okay, we need to cut this and move on, but I have to continually. Mm -hmm. And he's been in my life. And I was explaining to you before, he's been in my life since I was an adult. I grew up basically as an adult with him. And what shaped me as a woman, there's a song called Drake shot for you. And he said the way you hear wait. And he said to me one time when we were divorcing, he goes, this song is about us because in the song, he said, the way you wear your hair is because of me. The way you do this is because of me. Like it goes on. And that's Mm. true. Like everything that shaped me in my twenties was trying to be the woman that he wanted me to be. So I don't know what it's like to be an adult. So I don't have like a sexual connection with him or anything like that. Like I've always had this, like, I just want him to be happy feeling, but Mm -hmm. I don't want that to jeopardize what I've been the primary. Like I, I decorate his house. I like determine and influence how he parents our children and how things work out with them. Like I've been that primary person. And so it's definitely a learning curve for me 
and rightfully so like I'm not that I need to pull back a little on that role because I do want him to be happy and I want I do trust him that he's going to have a good woman in my children's life but I do have to get through some of the pettiness and immaturity that I'm seeing but I don't know how other women have done it where the dude has married right away or I don't know how they I don't know how they do it like I really don't know how they do it I don't know either I mean the stuff that you tell me on and off the air, I don't, I have no idea. And of course I come in because you kind of got me into this ass astrology. Am I saying, I'm like ass odrologically. No, I totally agree. I'm bringing it up right now because I wanted to talk to you about it too. But some of that, like we were texting the other day and you were saying something and I happened to stumble upon this, you know, Instagram you're going through and it's like, oh, a suggested site or suggested account. And now I can't remember the name of it. I sent it to you. Um, But it had something about your astrological reading or something for today. And it was so spot on with what you were saying, like scary accurate, that it got me thinking, like, really, I'd like reading my horoscope and everything, but I never really looked at it like a a guidebook or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But now I'm kind of getting into that kind of stuff. And I I feel like embarrassed to say that because for so long I've always thought, oh, it's just like a hokey kind of thing. But I'm really thinking there is something to just energies and all that kind of stuff. Well, your angel lady is what kind of did it for me because I she had mentioned like soulmate stuff, and you and I both have kind of a a distrust or kind of skeptics like skepticism and then Mm. what made me kind of do a turnaround with like all this is that from the time that I met Patrick I this is going to sound really cheesy I always recognized there had this weird connection like even though he's autistic light I always felt like I had this intuitive sense that I knew him or that I understood him on that I was like his guide dog seeing I got seeing eye dog for for understanding social situations or, or intuitively kind of new stuff was up with him or, and even when we were apart, because the first couple of years, he wasn't into a relationship and all that. And I would like dream every night that I would want to be with him. And like, if I ever got him and that's why I kind of forced him to like marry me, like, you know, and he's, (laughs) I know, I know, I know I was really mature, but I stumbled across this thing through processing all this because it's really weird to have somebody that you have that connection with that you always knew was going to be the father of your children and that you're going to have this like thing with to see them like here I am out here dating and doing all these things and I always had this intuitive nature that we wouldn't end up together yet we were meant to be together if that makes sense and there is a thing out there called a karmic relationship okay I haven't heard you know anything about it no a karmic relationship and I I would like to know what your angel lady thinks about this Okay, Julie, if you're listening, we're asking you, what is a karmic relationship? So a karmic relationship is somebody that usually they are people that you marry young and you don't end up with. And they happen when one or both of the souls are involved in a past life now who owe a karmic debt to the other. And usually they um, will come into your life and help you grow or help you or do whatever and but they're not meant to stay and and the thing is is that what we have to struggle with in our lives today if you believe any of this because that could totally be like speaking hokey pokey is that um i feel like i'm like sjp and um what was that movie she was in with Bette Midler? hocus pocus is that um is that is that that you are meant to what you're what you have to do now is to let go like I have to let go. That is what I need to do as part of my karmic debt. Like the karmic debt has been fulfilled and now I need to let go. There's that we had some sort of unfinished business from a past life that needs to be resolved for both of our souls to be move on. So I need to let go. That is interesting. Does the Colonel or Pat believe in this kind of stuff or no? Colonel does not. Colonel is very like one way, God, that's it. Patrick, though, was when I came back and told him what the angel lady said, he was very interested in that. And I think I told you before, his 
sister went and saw a medium about his dad and his dad like sent him a message and all this. Like Patrick is way more open to anything of this nature. Okay. Well, I used to tell him when we were younger, like, oh, I think we're soulmates or I feel like we've known each other, blah, blah. Again, I was 20 and I was 24. I was like crushing hardcore, fangirling, whatever. He was older than me. He drove like a Maxima and I thought that was like – Got my panties dropping. Uh oh, a maxima. Yeah, Watch and out. he burned a, and he burned a candle in his room, and I thought that was really sophisticated. <laughs> Wait, what kind of candle was it? Was it like a Glade grocery store candle? Yeah, it was, and I thought that was like sophisticated. Living at his mom's house, and he would pass out after going out, and I'd be knocking on the window because he would be like, "Oh, hey, come over," and he'd be sleeping. You couldn't get enough of that Mountain Berry Glade essential candle no. smell. <laughs> I know. I know. And he used to like put on Playboy on the TV, but it was like a legal cable. So it would have all the lines in it. So you would like every couple seconds, you'd see like a picture of a naked chick. Wait, he would put on the Playboy, like porn in front of you? Yeah, it was like Playboy. It's like very soft core. It's just like uh, pretty girls and like topless. But it would. Um, this is Jody. What is, what did you call me? Sister Mary, <laughs> Sister Jody, Margaret. <laughs> His sister Margaret Jody. Oh God! Holy shit! Okay. Oh, I thought he was like sophisticated. <laughs> that's because that's because you had that porn star bumper sticker in your car. You're like, we're the perfect couple. He's sophisticated. <laughs> I'm a surfer. Exactly. <laughs> So I thought, but I, he's not as in touch with the afterlife, but he's very curious about all this stuff. Like he, he's into it. You know what I mean? Like he's always like interested in a good psychic or whatever, but, uh, I don't even know where I was. Basically, I think that I'm meant to learn a lesson through the process I'm going through. And my girlfriend today texted me and she goes, I'm really anxious. I scheduled a doctor with in Florida. And she goes, how did you get through this whole big emotional breakdown you had last week? And I said, well, I probably texted diaries to Jody, and I texted diaries to you and I took Cava Cava and I just journaled the shit out of everything and look up Pinterest shit. So I, and tarot Instagram accounts. So I think I've moved out of it, but I've definitely One thing I did this time is that I owned my feelings, which normally I would have deflected onto him and blamed everything on him. Also laid out what I expected in my boundaries with him. And I definitely think by him canceling his plans that day, putting together Bailey's room, you know, him calling me when he had the breakdown, I was like, I have to give him a chance for him to be able to date and be a dad because he really struggled with that when we were younger and I've grown and I need to give him a chance to grow too. Right. And play this back when I have doubts. I was just going to say, you're saying it and you're saying all the right things. And I truly feel like you feel it in the moment. You just have to keep telling yourself that. And I'm saying that because I'm about 30 pages into a new book. So I'm basically an expert at this now. And it is called... (laughs) Uh, you are a badass by Jen Sincero. You've read this, right? Yeah, I have the book. I can tell you that I have a whole shelf of books I've ordered that I didn't actually read. So I actually own a copy of that book, but I don't know if it counts that I didn't read it. Yeah. Well, I started reading it. Um, the girl who sells my hair was telling me about this. She's like, you've got to read the book because, it's a quick read. It's your sense of humor. It's not too hokey pokey, like, you know, like a Leon teen mom. I'm standing in my power, y'all. Um, <laughs> and it is pretty good. And she taught, I'm oh, I'm looking right now. I'm on chapter four or five, so I'm barely into it. But she said exactly what you said when you said, I just need to keep telling myself that, that as cheesy as it sounds, you have to do that. Like really say it over and over and over again, fake it till you make it, which I guess is the same thing that a lot of these books say, but like you really have to do it. You have to keep telling yourself the shit that you really don't believe in order to believe yourself. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I totally agree. And I'm, like I said, I'm so lucky because 
I have had a lot of tumultuous years the last few years, and I'm so tired of these emotional spikes. And I'm really lucky that the few people around me that I've actually trusted didn't come back to me and be like, you're a mess, you're a freak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like definitely being able to 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 get, send diaries worth of text messages and not expecting a response just to be able to like speak to somebody definitely helped me through the process much quicker. Yeah. And I definitely got to hear myself say all the things that I know to be true, you know? And to feel like you're okay to say it, you know, that no one's going to yeah. judge you or that, yeah, it's okay to feel that way and all that. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. And I've gotten so many beautiful texts or uh, Facebook messages and Instagram messages and uh, emails about just owning my truth. Like I definitely think I'm, I almost, I was writing us like an ad today. We're definitely naked and afraid when it comes to parenting, careering and marriage. We're letting it all hang out. Yeah. I don't think I've been this unguarded really in years to just be say, Hey, I'm really weirded out that he's dating someone. I know that's weird to say, and it's super hypocritical, but I've been like in this comfortable cocoon and it's really fair of him to date, but you know what? I'm still weird about it. And I think that should be, we say this all the time to each other. Like, why hasn't someone written a book? Why isn't this a bigger deal? Why aren't more people talking about this? Because it happens. How many, what percentage of marriages end in divorce? at least 50. So why the fuck is no one talking about this shit? I mean, even the no. most amicable divorces, which sounds pretty much like you and Pat. I mean, of all the people who have gone through divorce that I know, yours sounds like Mary fucking Poppins compared to everyone else, yeah. you know? No, and people even didn't that even is know hard. for the first couple of years. Yeah. People didn't even know for the first couple of years because we still went to all the events together. Our shit was like finalized before even anybody even knew because we still represented to the public. We just were alternating at the house and stuff. Well, and that's hard because what do you do? Just go and make an announcement one day, like in a newspaper, like when marriages are announced, you know, like, oh, by the way, we're yeah. announcing a public, which sucks because you shouldn't have to explain that shit to anyone. It really no. should not be anyone's business, but it not that it's anyone's business, but you kind of have to broach the subject, especially when there's kids, you're picking them up from school and this and that. It's going to come up. It's inevitable, but it sucks. I have to think it's got to suck for you. It does. It does. And I hope that by even when I talk to you, I hope that you're like, I'm going to hug Dave even harder tonight because <laughs> this whole post, because I was, I went out of it with such high hopes and dreams. Like I'm going to live the life and find the man that's going to love me. Like he didn't and all that. And pe nobody tells you that you still sleep with your ex-husband during divorce. A lot of people do that. I know that sounds weird. And nobody tells you that your first breakup post-divorce is probably going to be even harder than your divorce because you that person was for you and it was supposed to be the dream post-divorce. And it you, you know, you kind of mm -hmm. went back to like, you know, a stars in your eyes and the optimism and all that. There's so many ugliness and so much that you go through that people just don't tell you. And I think the other thing that I've really been doing a lot lately. And again, I don't want to get on to me because I've really talked the first 25 minutes of this is that I think even through this process of seeing him date and all that, I think I've really owned up to a lot of things I did in our marriage and even after the marriage that maybe I didn't own up to before. And once you take control of your actions, whether even if they're negative, you really have the power in your hands and you feel less like, okay. I did A, B, and C, so really I'm not responding to what he's doing. I'm really responding to my own actions and the life that I'm making. So it's actually really improved the colonel and I because it really had me take control even of my current relationship and my current life rather than blaming somebody else for it. Right. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I know. So, I feel like, like I'm, I'm I, I don't want to say that in a condescending way. Like I'm like as a friend, I'm like really proud and happy for you because I know it sucks. Can I ask you this about divorce? Because my sister brought mm -hmm. this up to me once and it surprised me and I kind of took offense to it in a way because I'm like, I don't think I'm like that, but I think she's right. And she said that as a divorce mom, married moms 
like your cohorts, your social circle, they look down on divorced moms or single moms and they like don't want to hang out with them. It's like the married click and we don't hang out. Are you serious? That Can I fucking, tell you? It, like, people I'm not mad at you. Talking. Like, that pisses me off and offends me. Why would people give a shit? People stop talking to me. What? Um, yeah. Um, even though Pat and I were still seemingly in the same house and we were alternating and we were good with it, there was even one particular girl that I didn't want the kids going to because she went talk. She stopped talking to me. And Patrick said to me, if she's not cool with you, she's not cool with me. And that was somebody he went to high school with because we were so, we were so amicable in the decision. And, and the thing is about him is that he definitely likes his own space. So for him, I think the divorce was a relief because he had the kids 24 seven and a woman that was like taxing his emotions 24 seven, and he needs a lot of alone time. So for him, the divorce was not as traumatic. Like we're still a family. I get what I want out of this relationship is I get the family. So if anybody is going to be an asshole to you, they're going to be, they're rejecting me too. And I'm going to stand with you. But yeah, I lost actual friendships over and I see it at the school. I see the looks when they say, Hey, um, you know, quote unquote mom's boyfriend or whatever, or that we're divorced other parents. I see it. And I also saw it too with Kiernan's issues as that, um, the school kind of find out about Kiernan's issues because, um, when Kiernan had the fall, I kind of notified the school because the girls missed school and I had them in counseling. Like I had a trauma therapist and they were all like, no, they're really, really well adjusted, blah, blah. blah. And they tried to use it in the thing. And I got the second looks at the school and whether kids could come over and play. And I'm like, my kids, been in the hospital for a year. He's not here. So you'd be, and I don't blame those parents for being careful, at least about the sibling situation, but I've always had the judgy moms about being divorced. And Pat and I have always been a united front at the school and we've always had the same last name. We'll show up to the school together. We do all that stuff because, and the soccer field and doing all that stuff because of the attitudes of other parents. Like it's divorce is not catchy. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not contagious. I do not get that at all. I do not understand. I, I mean, I'm trying to think I, my kids have had friends who the parents are divorced and I don't think twice about it. It doesn't matter to me, but like my sister has said, she'll talk with old friends or some of her friends at work. And I'm not trying to like out her shit or whatever, but just in general, the, hey, we should get together. And it's kind of like, yeah, we should. And there's no follow through. Like you must have the plague or something. I had the same thing. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It doesn't look like Instagram, but you know what? My kids have never seen arguing even when we were married. My kids have never seen unhealthy roles of mothers and dads. And we do vacations together and we do holidays and they have not seen a break. Like, yeah, have we been divorced? Yeah, but they didn't see the ugly side of it or two parents that hate each other that stay together or whatever. We, they've never seen that. And I definitely encountered some very ugly behavior from other people. That's so bizarre to me because it's the complete opposite. If there was going to be a single dad, you know, that had the kids and all that kind of stuff, it'd be like, ooh, dreamboat. That's bullshit. I, I just oh. I think it's bullshit. And on behalf of whatever asshole women are out there doing that, I'm sorry because that is so ridiculous. I, well, I he gets credit for being a fucking dad. Listen, he needs to take 50% of the parenting and he does. He coaches, he does, you know, goes to the plays. He's like the, you know, we both did medieval day. He worked one station. I worked the other. But he's a dad and he should not get any more credit than me for stepping up. Like I get, don't get me wrong. I really give credit to dads that do step, whatever. But my point is, is they'll be patting him on the back and then judging me for the fact that we got divorced. That's such bullshit. So I'm sorry about that. That freaking sucks. And maybe we're all going to think twice (laughs) around us if we have friends or people around us that are divorced and check ourselves, make sure that we're not doing that. Do you think total kind of rewinding a little bit? Do you think going through all these life changes drew you into the horoscopes and the crystals and all that? Cause you're really into that stuff. 
I was in that from a younger age because my mom thinks she's a witch. So I was in that from a younger age, even when I was in high school. And then I got away from it. And then now I'm getting back into it. And, oh, can I just add on one more thing? Because I know the colonel's going to listen. Yes. And then I'm going to add something else. Because that was really weird when you said that. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Go ahead. So one thing I have to give credit for is that when we do do co-parenting events, the colonel is right there. He did Bailey uh, McKenna's birthday party to completely paid for everything to uh, the escape room. It had like a Harry Potter theme. So he bought all the girls robes and he did the luncheon after and Bailey had an injury at the escape room and he's meeting Pat at the ER and bringing them subway and they go golfing together. There's not a more evolved dude to be involved and he's very respectful and he's very, professional. So if, p- if people are going to judge like a situation that is, you know, that we're co-parenting. Pretty and much ideal. Divorced, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like the guy does like everything for my kids. Hillary Clinton called him Prince Charming for fuck's sake. I mean. Exactly. It takes a village <laughs> to raise a kid, especially when you have a kid like Kiernan. And Pat has several times been like, oh my God, thank God that Mike is there because he has stepped up to the plate. So I just had to add that on really quick because I've talked for the first 30 minutes of this and I love hearing your voice and all your stories, but I did have like a major kind of emotional thing. And some of our listeners are so amazing. They will literally message me and be like, Hey, is everything okay? I don't know if they can tell the difference between my posts or what it is, or if they're super empaths or whatever it is, but they can pick up on when there's when there's, you know, ripples in the yeah. waters, but I do want to just give credit. Yeah. We had that awesome listener the other day that sent us a message. I was like, you guys just sounded a little off and stressed out. And it was so sweet and so helpful. So thank you for that. You know who you are. You guys are seriously just the best, but I, I'm asking you that because you're the one who kind of got me into this whole crystal and energy thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm not like, you know, crazy wearing patchouli and, you know, linen tunics and all that kind of shit. But you sent me these crystals for my birthday and I was like, oh, you know, what is it about? I have them sitting in front of me right now. And Holly, who listens, she's, I just want to say like our friend, Holly, Holly, you're our friend. Um, I put out that I was like, you know, so what do you do with the crystals? Like you have them, you believe in them. And she explained it so perfectly well. And it really was kind of an echo of what Julie, our angel whisperer lady had talked about that. Like everything has an energy, even when it's burnt down and it's decomposing, it doesn't just disappear. Like everything maintains this energy. And she was talking about how if you go to a crystal shop or a rock or whatever it is, sometimes you're just drawn to a certain one or you're holding it or you just like a certain feel for it. Um, and so it totally just made sense. And I was like, Oh, here, I'm like tossing my knot right now. These ones that you sent me. And yeah, I don't, it's just interesting. And whether it's truly a real thing or not, there has to be some kind of science to it. Right. Like it didn't just show up on the earth. Right. Well, I think there's energy in everything and your angel lady explained it. And she explains it really well. So I hope actually that you end up having her as a guest on your day, yes. on your, on your day thing, or you, she comes on ours. Yes. But- and I just want to say for those of you who are listening, like, oh God, this is crazy. They're going off the rails. Trust me. I get it. Ask Carrie. I was a super skeptic and I'm not like, you know, burning sage in every room of my house. Although I did sage my house. So maybe I shouldn't say that, but you know what I'm saying? I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I believe this shit, but the way she explained it scientifically, you can't deny it. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, she, no, she explained it perfectly. And I've done, um, I did a course for Reiki and stuff and they explained the same thing. So, and actually my coworker is getting into crystals because of me. And I, she got me a water bottle with crystals in it for my birthday which is my favorite birthday gift I got this year. And you didn't like your wrestling shirt. (laughs) Okay. That's my, okay. It's my second favorite. The wrestling shirt, by the way, is like a crystal here until my feelings feel better. (laughs) 
<laughs> let me tell you something. That shit is like lingerie to Mike, and that's not what we were trying to accomplish there. Sorry. I got you the cute underwear for your shit, and for me, it's supposed to not do that. Okay, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. So yeah. you got a, a water bottle of crystals. Yeah, so you I put drink it on water and water like, out of it. Yeah, and it has crystals in the bottom and and oh. all that. Super cool. I l- fucking love it. And I had actually sent a picture of this water bottle, similar but not the same thing, to my ex husband for my birthday gift. So it's really ironic because she ended up getting it for me. Okay, so, so speaking of ironic, right when you said, "Oh, can I tell you something about the kernel?" So. I started noticing the same time and number all the time. Like every time I would look at the clock or every time I would see something with numbers, it would either be a pattern or it would always be 333. Okay. Just weird. But I'm kind of a mathematical person. But share share what that means though. Can you share what it means? So at first I always just thought like... (laughs) My best friends growing up, I would always make a math problem out of their phone numbers. And I am like not Doogie Hauser. I am not even close to autistic. I wish I were because I'd be much smarter than I am now. But I always just kind of found patterns in phone numbers and stuff. I have a weird memory for that. And so in the past maybe six months and a year, I started noticing the same number popping up. It would be like 222 or 333. And when I met with Julie the other day, I was helping her kind of hook up stuff for a podcast that she's thinking of starting. She started talking about, because I like, how did you get into this stuff? Like, did you grow up with it or what? And she started explaining to me that she started seeing repeating numbers all the time. And she was not super, I'm probably not relaying this exactly right, but it started freaking her out. She was like, am I having a mental breakdown? What is going on? And Long story short, she pointed me to this website called Joanne's Sacred Scribes. And you can go on there and any number you see or whatever, it's this massive website that tells you what the numbers mean. So I was looking at this 333 and it's and everything about this number 333 or the number three, whatever, is about like your spiritual awakening and opening the door to new things and being creative and kind of everything that's going on with me with starting a podcast and all that. And right when I started talking about this, when you said, oh, in the kernel, I'm looking at a recording thing right now. And do you know what time it was? What time? 33 minutes and 33 seconds. See the world, the angels are whatever the world, whatever you believe in energy, whatever, a rock, whatever you believe in is sending you a message. So you sent me what that meant. And I totally believe that, especially with your recent, and I didn't want to bring it up what you did over the weekend, because I think you're going to probably tell your Patreon folks. Um, But I just think a lot of good things are coming to you. Don't be embarrassed. Only, only whatever you want to speak of here, but I thought you'd probably save it for your Patreon. Well, are are you talking about the TLC? Yeah. I want, if you had any feedback or anything, or else you want to save it for Patreon for people that are trusted your tree of trust, your, <laughs> your, your the- apple branch, your apple orchard branch of trusted folks. No, there's really like nothing much. I mean, it was so quick. You saw it. They were running short on time, but yeah, no, it was just, I, I was, I'm like a, what is it? An, an Oscar nominee. Like I was just honored just to be there and to witness it. No, but yeah, I mean, just that in and of itself as just being my little self and my, you saw my little closet office. It's like what four feet by five feet, something like that. It was it was an honor to just be involved. But yeah, I mean that just kind of went along with this whole number three three three. So I don't know. I mean, I think you're more religious than I am. Like this you is like coming, to go to church and all that, right? This is coming from the girl who did eight years of <laughs> <laughs> right. I am definitely. I, you know what I call it. I'm definitely spiritual. I have Mm. the grandmother that was raised in a convent. My great aunt was mother superior. And then I have the, my my mother who's the Bohemian witch. She really believes in the witch thing and American and all that. But I think what it is, is I'm superstitious spiritual. 
I'm really okay. worried about I'm very spiritual, but I'm really worried that I'm gonna I'm pissing off karma or I'm pissing off God or I'm pissing off some sort of force that's causing all these things in my life. I'm super, super superstitious. Like Kieran the other day was trying to tell me about an article he read about the satanic temple or whatever. And I'm like, I can't hear it. And I'm like texting Pat. I'm like, you need to tell him to shut up right now because I cannot listen to this right now. I'm I'm in a fragile state. I can't even listen to this right now. Well, maybe it's because your soul is receptive to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just can't. But what I was going to tell you about how the crystals and all that is, and by the way, Holly's helping me with um, dream interpretation. So she's doing (gasps) her crystals. She's doing my dreams right now. Is that oh, I love this. Okay. So I went to a psychotherapist. I went on a date with a psychotherapist through Match. He was a doctor. Oh my God. Yes. That was like hitting that the mother be, load. Yes. I, oh my God. That's what I need. If I ever get divorced, I hope I don't. Or maybe if I have a polygamous marriage, like Dave and I, and then I have a second oh husband psychotherapist. Best. Would that not be... He, Holy shit. That he would be the was best. better than the Cheesecake Factory menu in front of me. <gasps> so he was also, he was a psychotherapist. He was a doctor. T- told me about these YouTube channels for whatever shit, like you listen and you watch and all this stuff. He's totally higher level than me. But he was also trained with a shaman. Mm. So he was telling me about like s- negative energy and all that. And he was like explaining to me what Himalayan salt does. So no lie, I put packets of Himalayan like rock salt around Kieran's room. And to this day, and again, that's so something my mom would do who put talcum powder in my attic thinking somebody lived up there. But everywhere he found all these packets of salt because he explained to me that they would um, absorb the negative energy that was around Kiernan. So even to this day, we still find packets of salt that I had placed around his room. <laughs> I get to the little work. My mom would just feel she would just get the regular table salt and be like, eh, it works. It's cheaper. <laughs> that sounds good. Julia, I feel That's so, interesting. I feel so bad. I talked so much on this episode. Oh, stop it. You did not talk too much. She did not talk too much, right, you guys? But I think you, you did not were, I just feel like there's other divorced women out there that have gone through what I have yet to go through. And I want to say, hey, I am with you. The struggle is real. It, you are and listen. Cold. Don't don't apologize for it. That's the other thing. We've got to stop saying sorry. I don't. You're just reading sorry the for badass ourselves. That you got that out of that. I badass. am reading the badass. I'm. I am thirty pages in, and I am the biggest badass you have ever known. Just wait till I get to page forty. <laughs> so what else is going on with you? Like for real, where's the, like, it's your turn now because I think I've monopolized enough. And I think what people do is they're like, okay, I'm just listening in so I can get to the Jody part. No, Carrie, stop it. See, you're starting negative energy. Yeah, I'm holding my crystals right in front of me. Stop it. No. Nope. I like being your no. little Robin. I like being the hot no. mess express. <laughs> no, you have a lot more fun stuff going on this week. No, Dave's out of town traveling. So it's just me and the kids. I have the tent up in my living room, dining room again. Uh, no lie. They are taking a bath upstairs because they wanted to take a bath together. Don't send me any creepy shit. It's not like that. They are just best friends. They're 13 months apart. So to them, they're like twins. Um, yeah, it's just so much easier sometimes when they're traveling to just go with the flow. Paige had noodles for dinner. Charlie had his little Lunchable. Had a nice little afternoon after I got some work done this morning. Life is good today. So you are you trying to tell me? <laughs> See, I'm leaving you speechless. Normally, I just am like bitching nonstop. You're like, whoa, she's not as interesting when she's average. No, heck no. <laughs> Girl, I told you before you could be telling me about Dr. Pepper, and I think you're like, the shit. You can make anything sound interesting. Speaking of Dr. Pepper, did you know they make a Dr. Pepper with real sugar? I saw that in the store today. No, is real sugar better for you with diet stuff? I don't know. I just think it's another ploy for money, which this is going to be my last thing to say. This is another thing that's been eating at me for the last week. Cake pops. Can I just say this whole fad of cake pops just needs to go away because it is the most disgusting thing It's disgusting. People take cake and frosting or whatever, roll it around in their grimy hands, 
throw some icing on it, and they sell it, and people eat it. That's disgusting. Ooh, I'm a little weirded out by that. Well, what do people think it is? That's what I don't understand. I, I love. I think we have a new segment. It's called Jody's Rants. Uh, that's fine with me, but this cake pop thing, I've been wanting to get this off my chest for the last however many years, three, four years that they've been all the rage. It's disgusting. Mashed up cake, frosting, roll it around in your little boogery hands, dip it in some icing, God knows where it came from, and people just eat it up. I've never eaten one. I will never eat one. My kids have never eaten one. Do your I was about to say, do you ever let your kids eat them? No. It's just never really come up because I'm kind of like my mom. Like, I'm not going to spend $2 on that. I could buy a whole cake for $2. Which, by the way, your mom looked adorable today. Please share. <laughs> oh, my mom is the cutest mom ever. She went on a little seniors tour. She goes on all these little tours and she went to Soldier Field today and she took pictures in the locker room and outside and she's got this adorable picture. She's holding her sun visor and her little Velcro sandals and oh, she's just the cutest. Oh, and a little backpack that was from a leftover, you know, like those, what do you call those kind of backpacks, the Carrie? Like the. Ones. Yeah, where it's each side has like two strings and you cinch it at the top and you wear it. It's from a kid's I coding camp. I have one <laughs> and mine is like rape awareness from the military. And I'm like, that's exactly what I want to be wearing on my hiking trail. Yeah, oh, rape awareness with your rape whistle. Yeah. You know that you can get that keychain, the one that looks like a cat or a dog. Have you seen no. those? It looks like a cat or a dog. You can get them on Amazon and if someone tries to attack you, the little ears on the cat or the dog, you can use to stab people. I think that's really cute, but I would be the kind that would end up stabbing, uh, stabbing myself. Uh, yeah, I probably would too. Like my knee or my leg driving, excellent move, and just two punctures right through the leg. I did have something weird happen to me. Yeah. So let's hear okay, it. So. On Facebook, uh, you know how you get those really weird random requests that you know that are probably somebody that took somebody else's Facebook photos from overseas? Yes. You know what I mean? Like the overseas Nigerian ones or Middle Eastern? I get a lot of those because I have the 90 Day Fiance group. Oh, like That's one of the they, words that's in the description. So you should see the guys I have wanting to get into the Facebook group. So they probably group. think that you're looking for a spouse. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm not, this is not an exaggeration. I probably get at least anywhere from like two to five a day. So I got a couple times, twice in a row, a Facebook request from this chick who I looked at her thing and it definitely did not look like they had anything in common. And I thought it was either somebody from overseas or I thought it was maybe a fake profile from an ex-boyfriend's ex-wife or something. You know what I mean? So I denied okay. it a, twice in a row, and I don't know how to use Facebook Messenger. I never use that or events, so I miss a thousand events. My apologies in advance. I don't know how to use that, and I don't know how to fully use Facebook Messenger, Messenger. because I've got. I'm the same way. So you yes, probably get, get beautiful yeah, messages you... from these fans that have listened to you. Or I don't want to say the word fan. And you don't see it until two yeah, months later. Yeah, I don't later. want to say the word fan because that's just yeah. that's just such a narcissistic word. I want to just say people that have appreciated things that you've said. Yeah, listeners or Facebook yeah. members or whatever. Totally. So I have Yeah, and then you look like a total bitch because you haven't seen it. And it's like three weeks ago, someone sent you this. I'm always like, oh my God, I swear yes. I didn't see it. So yeah. I, I don't know how to respond. I don't know who what, what site you're your messaging because I we have like a couple pages you know between the two of us so I rec denied this woman's request twice I sat on it for a really long time I'm like who's this bitch right and who like I felt like I was like FBI watching me like the rap song right feds watching me right <laughs> and I always feel like somebody's watching yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say that's me this. I love it. I love yeah. it. I was like queuing you up and I was, it was like T-ball and I was hoping you would hit the ball and you did. So I love it. 
<laughs> so you don't want to hear my singing voice. I told you my infant children, both of them, I would sing them lullabies and they would both reach up under a year old and put their hands over Girl, my I mouth. Cannot t- t- people would be throwing quarters at me if I was a stripper or if I was karaoke because I could not do either one. So like they'd yeah, be like, I'm please really- stop. Okay. Please so stop. who was this so- chick? So I finally figured out there's this place in Messenger where they have messages that are people that are not friends with you. And remember how I used to have this dream that somebody was going to find me on Craigslist, misconnections, or somebody was going to see me randomly and try to seek me out? This sums up my fucking life. I find this place of this magical place, this magical cloud of people that you're not friends with, but they send you messages And this woman had sent me a message saying, hey, do you remember me? Several years ago, I met you on a metro. You told me that somebody was looking at me and you were going to fly to Houston the next day to meet this guy for a date in D.C. And you said, look you up on Facebook. So rather than it being my soulmate is a dude that's trying to find me on Craigslist, (laughs) I have a random metro rider that took the time to try to friend request me twice and message me to let me know she was so struck by that crazy ride on the train that I told her somebody was looking at her and probably what happened to me flying to meet a random stranger in Houston on a first date that she probably needed to check on whether I was safe or not. Wait, so how old was this message? Oh, it's probably a couple years old, but she tried to friend request me several times. And do you I, remember this exchange at all? No, I don't. But I do remember flying to Houston. And I wrote her a message back saying, I cannot believe that you tried to friend request me twice and you did not give up. And I really believe in serendipity now. And I think so it's you a let her in. I did. And she did wrote me back. I did. And she wrote me back. She re- accepted my friend request today because I friend requested her. I figured. Third time's a turn. It's my turn now to return the favor. She wrote me back today and she's like, hey, I'm so happy to talk to you, whatever. So whatever I did or whatever impression I put in this woman's life was amazing. And the fact, and probably it was a safety check to make sure I was still alive on my first date. But the fact is. I love that you're not even meaning to do a humble brag, but you are because you're like, You know, things happen, and I granted her request. I let her be my friend. (laughs) Yeah, it's more like she wanted to see this train wreck that was happening. Look, things happen for a reason, and she must have done something good in her life because years later, I've accepted her. I've let her in. I must have really made an impression, and it's her time. The universe is speaking to her, and... (laughs) I've let her in. No, it's more like, I'm like, this sums up my life that no dude is ever going to try to find me. And then this girl thought I was crazy enough that she wanted me to be in her circle to be like, all right, is this one, number one, is this girl safe? And number two, whatever happened to this girl that I met on a random metro? Okay. Well, you're going to really like this. You ready? Yeah. If you guys want to find Carrie, where can they find you, Carrie? At Sip Shine Pod on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, and Facebook. Hashtag no if shame. Only, if only your friend knew it was that easy, right? <laughs> Just don't Facebook message me because I don't know how to find them. Oh, my God. And your Patreon today, by the way, with Kim from People Are Well. I feel like we've talked about her every single episode, but it was really funny. You guys were talking about the different kinds of doctors and who was the hottest and not. And then you started talking about different kinds of sex. And I seriously, like, I couldn't even listen. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not old enough was to it listen okay? to this. Was no. it okay? Because I never know what to post out there. Was it okay? Because I do have stuff to put out Yeah, there. it was really funny and interesting. But like you said, I don't, I've never grown out of my sixth grade sex ed class. So anything that's above holding hands, I'm like, oh God, I'm not supposed to hear this. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, we can find you, Sip Shine Pod everywhere. If you want to find me, I'm at Reality TV Pod everywhere. And if you want to talk to both of us, we are Moms OTR on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. 
we saved you a seat, right? Saved a seat for you. Yes. I'll never remember it, but yeah, it's something like that. And don't forget your Patreon because I think you probably have the most cost effective Patreon I've ever listened to. Oh, look at you. You really are a good wingman. Okay, seriously, it is pretty good though. Five bucks a month. You get all the back episodes every week. You get a bonus episode pretty much every week. I think I'm like three or four times a month. And then you get uh, access to my episodes early in the week before I post it. You so, really put effort yours into too, no, some great ones. You really put effort into your your Patreon because your episodes for Patreon are usually a half hour to an hour. You well, I feel like people are paying Patreon. money for it. Like I would want my money's worth, so I feel I, I want to. I mean, people are supporting me in the podcast, and that's the only way I'm making money in this whole, you know. 50 hour a week job these days. So yeah. No, I feel that way about the sip and shine because I posted episodes out there that I wouldn't feel comfortable out on the main feed. I'm like, if people pay for it, it's not so much about the money. Yeah. It's the fact that they're listening because they want to listen. They're not trying to exploit or judge. So that's why that's I do right. that. And then you are so gracious because you give me, you give me full authority to be like, yeah, post whatever outtakes because we have a lot of outtakes because of technical stuff. And you're like, yeah, post it. So I'm like, Hell is, yeah, I'm going to post it. So I feel very fortunate. Um, well, it's all the authentic stuff that we can't replicate. You and no. I are not good at acting. No, so we're, we're always like, oh, shit, that was really good. But we're not going to reenact it. That just doesn't. No. You and I are not good actors. No offense. But we're not good at that. So if you're a first-time listener, I swear to God, I don't normally do all the talking. But this was my therapy this week. And um, st- Hey, Carrie. Don't apologize. You are a badass. <laughs> All right. Let's leave the podcast. Maybe that can be our yeah, new outro. Thing. Yes, let's be our outro. You are a badass. Don't apologize. And scene. <laughs>